when we look at the First World War, obviously we've become focused, dominated by what happens on the Western Front. Outside that, there are very few realistic possibilities of change, things that could have happened, and Gallipoli is one of those. And we see the change that may have been affected in Russia, across the whole of the Middle East, which is in such turmoil still today. And we look at all of those possibilities, what could have been, what might have been. And yet, within the run of the war, really Gallipoli had little impact except showing how difficult it was to conduct both amphibious operations, but also any big military assault at that time. 1915 was very early in the war. On the Western Front, they're suffering too. There's a lack of understanding of how to deploy artillery. There's a lack of resources. They don't have the shells in the quantity they need. All of these have to be applied to Gallipoli. And really, the main lesson, when you look at the war as a whole, is it shows very starkly that Gallipoli was undertaken too early and there was no chance of the operations being conducted successfully because the lessons that they learned on the Western Front in 15 and 16 had not yet been learned. And so it really was a step too far. It's always very important when looking at Gallipoli to remember that the whole point of everything they're doing is to capture Istanbul. That is the big strategic goal because the argument ran that if they could capture Istanbul, Turkey would disintegrate and fall out of the war. And so at the end of the day, the naval assault and then the landing all is geared towards the capture of Istanbul. And you have to keep coming back to this throughout. Every time they do something new on the, on the water and on the land, how will this affect the capture of Istanbul? And it's this point that I believe indicates how quickly Gallipoli becomes a failure. Because very, very soon, even by the 18th of March, it's very, very unlikely that if the Royal Naval Fleet appears off the shores of Istanbul, it will collapse and Turkey will disintegrate. When Britain approached the issue of forcing the Dardanelles and then making a landing on Gallipoli, in almost every instance it underestimated the skill and determination of the Ottoman forces and because of that it really didn't apply the kind of rigour and planning that it needed to in order to make sure that when it undertook each attack it worked. And the result of that is that on each occasion it didn't have quite enough effort or enough power to pull off a victory. And so on each occasion, the Ottomans won, and when they did so, their confidence, their morale rose. And this meant that it became more and more difficult each time to try and overcome them the next time. After two or three attempts to reinvigorate the military campaign, it was recognised that there was no way the British troops were going to be able to go through. And it's very important to remember that each time there's a battle at Gallipoli, the whole point is again to go back to the Navy and push them through the Dardanelles. And so by the end of August it was clear that that was not going to happen. And the only option, because Britain couldn't afford to put more and more troops on the peninsula, was to pull them all off. And this was a very difficult political decision for the government to accept. But eventually in December it was taken and that process of pulling people off began. The evacuation from Gallipoli is always heralded as one of the great successes. And that's because they sat down and thought about it. They had weeks to plan it. And in contrast to the landings, they were able to think it through and they came up with a very clever idea that rather than just upping and going, they would gradually ease it off and they would take people off and this made a huge difference. They emptied the front line, they kept it intact and so the Turks didn't know they were going and this allowed them to get everybody and as much stores as possible off and that's what turned the evacuation into a big success. It, it was cleverly thought through. They applied the principles of planning, they applied the principles of time. Uh, and none of that applied to any other operation on Gallipoli and that's why it's always seen as a success in the evacuation in contrast to the landings which fundamentally are a failure. Assessing the value of Gallipoli and trying to work out what impact it had on the outcome of the war is a very difficult thing because it involves all sorts of counterfactual propositions but it certainly lengthened the war and it changed the strategic basis on which Britain fought it. We had to fight more campaigns in Mesopotamia and Palestine, which would not have been necessary had Turkey been knocked out at that juncture. Russia suffered strategically from the lack of resources which would have gone through had Turkey been knocked out. So there are very powerful reasons for arguing that Gallipoli would have brought a, a, an earlier end to the war. And yet at the same time, it would have had no impact on the main war on the Western Front and the defeat of Germany, which in the end, was the only thing that mattered.